morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome or, again. Or even if it's good afternoon when oh, you're that's watching true. Yeah, we I always, about that. Yeah. I just thought we always say good morning, but sometimes <laughs> yeah. people don't watch this till afternoon or another day. Maybe so. we should just start saying hello. Yeah, so whatever time of day it is, right, we're yes. glad you joined us yes, today. Yes, we are. Welcome to Tacoma, to Tacoma Island, Island, Island Online. Online. Yes. yes. So anyway, this week we are dealing with another one of our emotions. Yeah, and the idea behind this is to accept people for who they are. Not necessarily what they do. Right. Uh, or we, we can we can be annoyed or disgusted with what they do. Right. But we still need to have that love inside for them. That's right. For the you know, it's something in them, yeah. and we still need to love them and show them Jesus. That's right. The Bible says in, in John that Jesus came unto his own, but his own did not receive him. Right. But even though they didn't receive him and they rejected him, he still loved them. You know, and loved us enough to die on the cross for right. us. So that's kind of where we're going to be going today. Right. We're also dealing with being thankful. Yeah. So. And so we'll be taking a look at how do you deal with people that may be a little bit different than you are, but yet you can still rejoice and be thankful for those individuals. Right. So anyway, we'll get on with our program today. We've got yes. some cool things planned. Yes, so, we do. so we'll catch you back at the end. See you at the end. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fail are never enough. And you came along and put me back. 
This is our third week talking about our emotions, and this week we're going to talk about disgust. So when we think about disgust, we often think about things we don't like, like the taste of. So in the movie, disgust keeps Riley from being poisoned by broccoli. We know broccoli isn't poisonous, but a lot of kids and people don't like it, right? Well, there's another thing that Disgust does, and she helps Riley from being embarrassed. And so when the, when the scene is about Riley getting ready for the first day of school, Disgust is helping her pick clothes. She's, she's eliminating clothes that she finds disgusting and that aren't appropriate. So that looks at what other people see and what we see in other people. And when we see things that we don't like or understand, sometimes we can feel disgust. But Jesus said that if we want to be his followers, we must do as he did. That includes loving others, no matter who they are or what they look like. We need to get past our disgust and learn to love others like... What are you doing, Cecil? I love you, Leroy. I love everybody. Uh, thanks, but why... Why am I acting like this? I'm glad you asked. I didn't ask. I'll tell you why. I went to church this morning and learned that you're supposed to love everyone. So that's what I'm doing. I love you, Leroy. Ooh, I like you too, Cecil. In fact, because you're my friend, I was coming to ask if you'd come and play ball with me. Oh, no. I can't right now. I've got more important things to do, like loving people. Ooh, I hi, love you, Hi, hi, Cecil. Uh, hi, Rosie. I love you, Rosie. Have a good day. Thanks. Boy, this bag sure is heavy. Yeah, it looks like it is. You look pretty tired from carrying it, too. You're right. I am. Do you suppose... Do you think you could help me carry it for a little while? Oh, no. I'm too busy right now. Uh, hey, Rosie, did I tell you that I love you? I love you, sun. I love you, moon. I love you, stars. I love you, mountains. I love you... Oh, it's no use. Even loving everything in sight doesn't make you feel good. I'm lonely. And maybe Leroy's still around somewhere. Leroy! Leroy! What's up, Cecil? Oh, well, I got tired of love. Want to play ball? What do you mean you got tired of love? Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't much fun, so I'm not going to do it anymore. You know why it wasn't much fun? Why? Because it wasn't real love. You just got tired of saying, I love you. But love isn't just words, it's actions. Uh, what are you talking about? I'm talking about love, Cecil. You can't just say you love people. You have to show them by what you do. Oh, you mean like sharing stuff and being a friend and helping other people and uh-oh. Uh-oh? What's uh-oh mean? It means I just remembered something. If love really means actions, I really goofed with Rosie. She was carrying a big, heavy sack, and I didn't even offer to help her with it. Well, she probably hasn't gone too far. Maybe we can catch her. Yeah, let's go. Then I'll race you to the ballpark. All right. Hey, Rosie! Hey, good morning, Tim. How morning. are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Boys and, or girls, I like to say girls and boys. Yeah, that's, that's right. You know, because that's the proper way. Yeah, that's true. Hi, girls and boys and parents who might be joining us, grandparents. Uh, welcome to another day. Uh, you know, today, Tim, being the 23rd of January, yeah. really has a special place in my heart. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, my dad was born on January 23rd, wow. 1914. Yeah. So if he wow. was if he was still alive, he'd be 108 years old yeah, or right. right around there. Wow. Um, but I loved him, 
and he oh, had yeah. a special place in my heart. Sure. And that kind of brings us into today's lesson oh, yeah. about right. uh, God and Jesus, how much they love us. Yeah, that's right. And as that's you well cool. as you well know, because yeah. you're in charge, we're in Luke today. That's right. Now watch this. I love this part. Boys and girls, come on, let's show Pastor Tim. Is Luke the book of Luke in the Old Testament or the New? You got it. It's in the New Testament. See, That's I right. told you. That's right. Now, where in the New Testament? Let's start. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Now, there's a little sign. Oh, yeah. That's right. For sign, people that sign, that says, I love you. That's so, right. I love you guys, just, yeah. as, just as God loves us. That's right. And what I want to start with is God wants us to see and love other people not for who they are right not what they do what or they what do. they don't do right he wants us to love them just as he loves them that's for exactly who they right. are yeah. you know and so that really brings us into the lesson we're in Luke 17 right. and we're in verses 11 through 20 today so this looks old doesn't See, it that's an old bible yeah this bible i got when i was Five years old. Five years old. For knowing the books of the Bible. I got this in 1954. Wow. 67 <laughs> years ago. Wow. So let's read it. It's older than I've been alive. <laughs> Are you saying? I, I am older than you. Yes, I am. Anyway, Luke 17, start verse 11. And it came to pass as he, Jesus, went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood off afar. Now, I think it was law back then. Yes, in the Old Testament law, if you were a leper, that meant that you were unclean. So you were not allowed to get close to people. And you had to tell them, hey, you had back to, up! Yeah, unclean, unclean. You had to shout it out so that people would not come because if they touched you, they would become unclean. Oh. That's a good little fact to know why, you know, yeah. we look so many times we read and yeah. we, what's it mean? Right. Continuing with 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice, glorified God and he fell down on his feet giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan there's another important fact there yes. and Jesus answered him were there not ten cleansed but where are the nine they are not found to return to give glory to God save this stranger and he said unto him arise go thy way thy faith has made thee whole I'm going to stop there and I'll save 20 for later on. So, here we see, we all know the story. I mean, I've told it, I've sat under preachers that have preached oh, it. Yeah. They tell about, their focus is on the nine. Right. You know, I, I when I talk about I tell about the nine that didn't come back. But today, I want to look at the one, the one that did. And we all know the story. Yeah. Just to review it a little bit, there were ten lepers. Uh, they said to Jesus, have mercy on us. Uh, I think they wanted, they, obviously they wanted to be clean. Yeah, I'm sure they heard stories of Jesus healing people, so they were yep. hoping he'd heal us. So, yeah. And a lot of people back then thought lepers were cursed of God. Yeah, God had cursed them for some reason. Yeah. I, I don't know, I haven't found anything that says that, but yeah, yeah they believed that the person had done really bad, so because they had done so bad, God gave them that, that disease. So they were ceremonial. They were unfit. They were unclean. unclean. <laughs> Thank you for the kingdom of God. And I, they, you know, so they wanted. But they had faith. Yeah. Those nine had faith. Uh, you notice how Jesus responded, boys yeah. and girls. He didn't say, go and sin no more, like yeah. he had said to uh, the lady, right? right. Yeah. Uh, he didn't say, uh, you're healed. All she said was simply, go and see the priest. Yeah. And that was a command in the Old Testament that 
when you were healed from leprosy, you had to go to the priest, show yourself to the priest, the priest would look when you go over, and the priest, the priest would then tell you, you are cleansed. So now you can go out among the people. Wow. So, it's all, it's, this whole thing is, this passage is all important, oh, every yeah. little verse. Yeah. So we see in the first part of 14, their faith. Because what did they do? Yeah. When they heard Jesus, words, they just got up and went. They went, yeah. You know, he didn't say they're healed, right. or anything like that. And then the second part you, of 14, you see, and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Right. So that shows to me they had great faith. Yeah, God was honoring their faith. You know, as they, and that shows that they were going to the priests. If they were just going someplace else, they would not have been healed. Yeah. So we're going to go see the priest, and apparently he's going to tell us we're clean, and let's give it a shot. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Whether our God saves us or not, we're still not going to bow right. down to you. I think they jumped in the fire. I don't think they were pushed. But that's another. That's a whole other story. Now, this is where God's love comes out. I really think. Remember, I started with saying God wants us to look at people for who they are, not what they do, right. what they don't do. In verse fifteen, the one comes back, right. shouting to the Lord. Oh yeah, praising God, shouting to God. But, you know, people say, "Well, God's not that." No, <laughs> he, he can hear it, so why, why shout? Here's a good reason. There's a time, the Bible says there's a time to weep and a time to cry. Right. Now, the crying, the tears, is not so much bad. I mean, it could be overpowering. A verse could be overpowering right. to you, and you weep knowing how much God loves you. Right. And there's also a time to be still. Yes. And you and I have talked about this, and... We've both come to agreement where being still is after prayer or during prayer so you can hear God's answer to your prayer instead of you keep telling him what you want and how you want him right. to answer it. So many times we, we pray, but then we don't give God a chance to answer. <laughs> you know, and but there's also that time to shout. Oh, yeah. Because uh, Psalm 100 verse 1 says, shout with joy. Oh, yeah. To the Lord, all ye earth, all ye earth. It's King James. That's a little tongue twister there. Not only that, but when you get the book of Revelation, and uh, you know you get a, a better picture of heaven, heaven is going to be a loud place. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of shouting, a lot of rejoicing, a lot of praising going on. It's not going to be quiet. Think of this. If Christians today, every time God did something impossible in their life or yeah. moved to better them or to show how good he is yeah. if they were to shout how noisy would the earth yeah, be that's right you, it, you you'd have to walk around like this yeah. because he's working in everybody's life oh, yeah it kind of reminds me i don't know you ever been to new york city oh yeah uh -huh. what do you hear walking two steps beep beep oh, beep yeah. beep the taxi <laughs> watch all right they're not shouting they're not beeping because they're joyful that's they're right up, yeah. they're upset <laughs> yeah, get out of my right. way right. but i think it, it's so Unique that if if we praised and shouted out to God yeah. every time we moved, this would be a really noisy place. It sure would be. Yeah. Now, even different translations tell you, uh, shout praise to God. Right. Shout, you know, uh, uh, be deliberate about what you do. Lift your voice up. Yep. Now, I also got thinking about this in verse sixteen. There's two lessons. There's lessons throughout this, but here's two I found. Right. Jesus didn't quiet the guy. Yeah, that's right. He didn't say, hey, I've got a lot of people around me, and you are annoying. Yeah. But the main one is that it says that the man was a Samaritan. Yeah. And I think the other nine were Jewish. Right. So what that, the lesson for me, or for you boys and girls, is that no matter how bad we are, no, no matter what's going on, God loves you. God's grace yeah. is for everybody. Well, something else I just thought about, too, is the Jews and Samaritans were enemies. Yet, these ten people had a disease that made them unclean to everybody else. So even though the Samaritans and the Jews are enemy, these ten guys still are grouped together. They're grouped together. So the, the nine guys accepted the Samaritan, and the Samaritan accepted the nine guys. 
Because they're in kind of in the same boat. Yeah, they're in the same boat, yeah. You know, but God's grace, yeah. even though the guy was their enemies, God's grace is for everyone. That's right. Yeah. Now, here's the other one, and I don't want to get in trouble with this. But I think the second lesson that we should see from this is that when God does the impossible in your life, yeah. we should recognize it and respond accordingly. Yeah. I mean, so many times... Uh, I've been different places, different church, even churches, uh, during yeah. sermons and stuff like that. Somebody will say, I have been healed. Okay, go sit down. I've got a sermon to preach. How many times have you seen it happen? I think we should stop and jump up and start oh, yeah. praising God for what he's done in that person's life. Yeah, in fact, um, Wednesday night in our Bible study, there's a couple there that um, God did something amazing, something that was impossible. And I mean, you could hear them. I mean, they, they were shouting. Elevate, yeah. And everybody else was joining in and praising God. And it was a noisy time when we found out that God did this amazing thing for this couple. So I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, we need to respond that way. We need, we need. It's yeah. almost like the, the return of the prodigal son. Yeah. You know, right. shout, you know, thank you, Jesus. Right. You know, so... Look at it this way. Unbelievers think we're crazy anyway, right? Yeah. The unbelieving world, what are they shouting and praising God for? Well, why not remove that doubt? Yeah, right. Just go ahead and hey, let them know we are crazy for Jesus. Right. You know, what, what, right. what harm is there? Yep. Now, verse 9, or not 9, 9, verse 19, this is something I've never really seen. I think I've got it right. But it says in 19, it says, And he said unto him, Arise and go thy way. Thy faith has made the whole. Right. Now, I'm going to reserve what I think. What's your thought on that? And I think we're on the same page. Yeah. Well, the word in the Greek language means complete. So to heal them him physically, uh, that was great, but he was so separated from God because of his sin. And so um, because of the faith that he had in Jesus, he not only was healed physically, but he was healed spiritually. He, was, he became a child of God and began a relationship with God. So he was now complete because he was physically well, but also spiritually well. So he knew where the healing came from. Oh, yeah. Whereas the other nine, they were just healed, but they're still walking around not thanking yeah, God. I mean, this guy specifically believed in Jesus, not just in his healing power, but believed in him as, his, as their savior. The other nine believed that he had the power to heal them, but that's as far as it went. So in a way... He was healed because of the shout, shouting glory well, to God. Well, the, that was evidence of, evidence of yeah, right. the evidence of where the healing came from. Oh, he yeah. shouted out, thanking Jesus. Yeah, right. So it doesn't hurt to shout it out, right? Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. I want to close with this. Like we started, God wants us to look at and love people for who they are, right. not what they did or don't do. Right. Um. Because I didn't find any place in the Bible where God or Jesus removed the healing from those nine that didn't come back to thank him. No. No, I mean, he, they were healed, and, and they were healed from that point forward. Yeah. I saved verse 20 for last. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, got, well, you had another thought. What, a lot of times when you read through this passage, though, you, you look at the nine guys... And you have a tendency of putting them down because they didn't come back and say thank you. Oh, yeah. But, um, but by them being healed, God was starting a work in their heart. I was going to go down that okay, path. Okay, okay. I was going to go down that path. <laughs> right. So let's read, let's read 20 and 21. Right. I extended this even though your notes said only go to 20. It says, verse 20 in chapter 17, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, they weren't nice people, were they? No, they weren't. When he, Jesus, was demanded by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here, lo there. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And that's where you were going with this. Right. So, it says the Pharisees wanted to know where the kingdom of God was and where it would come, or when it would come. 
not knowing that it was already there. Yeah, standing right in front of them. <laughs> Boys and girls, the kingdom of God is not a worldly. Right. It's not a, a room. You 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 know. Right. You yeah. can't walk to the edge of the kingdom of God and bounce back. Right. It's kind of like um, the earth. Yeah. You can go. You can walk north. You can walk south. Right. But when you reach north. At one point you're going south, right? And you go south. At one point you're going north. Right. God's kingdom, I think, is like east and west. Right. Because you start going east, you always you never east. get to the west. Right. You always are going east. Right. And if you start to the west, you never get to the east. Right. You're always going west. So it was in those nine yeah. that the spirit of God was starting to develop. And work within them, yep. creating the kingdom, kingdom of God right. within them. You know, he healed them, but they hadn't come back to thank God to say, hey, thank you. Yeah. But he, he started a work in them. And in Philippians 1 What's 6, it? it says, uh, I'm, I'll probably mess this up, because I, but I know what the gist of it is. It says, He who begins or began a good work in you will complete it in the day Jesus comes back. Jesus, yeah. Yep. So he started to work in those nine. Yeah. I mean, they weren't bad people. No. They just failed to come back. So even though he, they didn't thank him, God started to work in them. Yeah. And what will be interesting when we get to heaven is to find out about these guys because, I mean, God did an amazing work in healing them like that. So that had to get them thinking. And. You know, maybe they weren't right as ready as the Samaritan was, but I wonder how many of those men, because of what God did for them and the work he was doing in their hearts, came to the point where they believed in Jesus as well. So, we should resist looking at programs and institutions yeah. to um, measure yeah, right. God's kingdom. Right. Measure how we're doing and what, you know, Instead, we should look at the heart, look at the heart of people that are in those programs. Yeah. Because it's not the program that grows. Yeah. In fact, in the Old Testament, it says man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. That's what he wants us to focus on is the heart. So, in closing, Jesus loved them. Yeah. And he wasn't upset that they didn't come back. Right. Because he started working. Yeah. And he knew what was going to happen. Because he started that in their heart. Right. Not an outward appearance. So boys and girls, you know I'd like to close with a question or a thought. Sure. Do you get upset? I'm talking to me too. Yeah. And, and you also. Oh yeah. Do we get upset when people don't do what we think they should do? Right. Or... Do we love them just as God does? That's right. So, great question to think about. Yeah. Boys and girls, I want to thank you for joining me today on this special day and joining uh, Pastor Tim as we hopefully enlightened you a little bit about the one yeah. and versus focusing on the nine. Yeah. So, right. Tim, thank you very much. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. It's good to see you. Good to see you. And have a great day. Yep. Bye. So this week we're talking about disgust and I'm certain you've already decided or thought about like a hundred different things that you think are disgusting and they're probably all vegetables or other foods. But there are other things that we can be disgusted with. Disgust is just, ugh, it's not just a yuck, I don't like the taste of that. But it's also just this feeling that this isn't right and I don't like this. And disgust can be something that is an emotion that kind of protects us because we recognize that something is not right and, and we're upset by it, okay? And so when we are talking about Jesus experiencing disgust, it's actually the same story as when Jesus was angry. And so if you remember from our first week when we talked about Jesus being angry, I said that all of the Gospels include this story. 
And it's, it's the different writers of the gospels kind of viewpoint on it, but it's all the same story that when Jesus came into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday for Passover, he went into the temple. And what were they doing in the temple? They were selling animals for sacrifice. And so they had it set up like a market. And this is the house of God. This is a place of prayer that everyone should be able to go to. And these people were making it into a market where only the people with enough money could buy the animals for sacrifice and, and be able to participate. And that really, really upset Jesus, right? You remember he flipped the tables and he drove them out. And so how is that discussed? Well, when something is wrong and you know it's wrong, so when someone is picking on someone else or leaving someone else out because they're not, they don't have enough money or they're not cool enough or they look different, that, that deep down in us, it disgusts us. And that's why we get upset. We don't get angry and upset because, you know, they did something to us. It's, it's not them doing something to us. We get angry and upset because they're doing something to someone else. And we know it's wrong. It's, it's against what God would want, right? God wants us to love all people. And so in this instance, Jesus is upset, not only because they've turned his temple into a market. He's upset because uh, they're leaving out people. They're, they're putting a monetary or a money amount on being able to do something there. And so that's leaving out the poor and that's leaving out the sick who can't afford to do that. And, th and that disgusts him. And so his response is righteous anger out of disgust and out of anger. Okay. So we're going to read John's version of it. We did Matthew's version of it the week that we did anger. So this week we're going to do John's version. Okay. So we're in John 2, starting with verse 13. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, I didn't read that part before, but he did. He made a whip of cords. He drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. So he kicked them all out and pushed them all away. And in, in all the rest of the time that we see Jesus' ministry, Jesus didn't leave anyone out. Jesus helped lepers. The lepers were like those people that no one wanted to be involved with. They were dirty, sickly, disgusting, right? That's what we learned about. Jesus didn't care. Jesus loved everybody. He loved the sinners. He loved the lepers. He loved the sick. He loved everybody everybody, even the Pharisees who made him so angry. He came for them too, right? And so we can see in Jesus's behavior that disgust can help motivate us, right? Like I said before, it can lead us to be angry, which we learned that anger can push us into doing things, push us into action. And it, you know, it's controlled action. It's not going off and losing it on somebody. But disgust can also lead us into doing things where this thing really upsets you and, and just deep down in your heart, it hurts you. And you're like, this is not okay. So it helps us to, to take action. But it also can protect us because, you know, those, those darn vegetables that don't taste good. We don't, we don't want those. Those are not good for us. That's not true, right? But disgust can also protect us because it helps us to recognize things that are not right, right? So when you're feeling disgusted, not by broccoli, remember that that's an emotion that Jesus felt too. And that that's an emotion that we feel because we were made in his image and in God's image. Girls, Miss Lisa here. Um, I have a pretty cool object lesson for you today, so I'm super excited. Um, here I have a glass vase 
with some pieces of pipe cleaner in it. And there are a um, bunch of different kinds of pipe cleaners um, in all different colors. There's some white, there's some red glitter, there's purple, there's green, there's gold glitter, there's red, yellow, um, black, brown, so a little bit of everything. So those pipe cleaners are going to represent people. So are all those pipe cleaners the same? Nope, they're all a little bit different. Do some of them have some things in common? Yeah, there's a couple that are like purple, but they're all not quite the same. So that's kind of like all the people that are around us. The people that are around us that go to our church, they're not all the same. The people that go to our school, not all the same. People that live in our house, not all the same. But we do have some things in common. Um, are all these people good? Well, some people are good and honest and kind and generous, but then you have some people in the world that are mean, um, angry, sad, depressed. Yeah, so all kinds of people. But we do have one or two things in common. One, we're all sinners. Every single one of us. You, me, everybody. Two, God loves everybody. In Jeremiah 31.3, God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love, and with that love I have drawn you to myself. Drawn you to myself. So that means he is pulling us toward him. Interesting thought. I have this great big magnet here. I'm going to show you something really cool. So if I go with his magnets with a pipe cleaner, now remember pipe cleaners are like a piece of metal with like that fuzzy stuff on the outside. So if I go with this pipe cleaner with this magnet, what happens? Yeah, look what happens. So if the magnet represents God, what is God doing with people? Drawing them to him. Yep. What if I move it over here? Hmm. Look at that. Now I want you to watch careful. Look at those. Watch this again. Watch as it does this. I'm going to shake them back down a little bit. Um, the magnet pulls up some of them, but then what happens to some of the ones on the bottom? These other pipe cleaners are pulling up some of the ones on the bottom. So if you believe God is your Savior and you have the Holy Spirit in your heart and He's drawing you to Him. He wants you to be his light and to shine out and to draw other people to him. Kind of like this magnet is drawing the pipe cleaners, but then some of those pipe cleaners hook onto some of the other pipe cleaners. They're not right next to the magnet. So God wants you to be filled with him and then show him to other people to help draw them to him. So, how do you do that? Because it's really easy to hang around with the only people that you like, that are similar to you. It's really easy to judge other people because they do something that you don't agree with and that you don't like. Um, it's really easy to say someone is bad so you're not going to hang out with them. But God wants you to see people for who they are, not what they do or how they act. He wants you to see people for who they are. So who are people? Two kinds of people. Two people. People who don't know Jesus, that need to learn how to learn about him and get to know him. And people who do know Jesus and need to get to know him more. So what God wants you to do is to look at not what people do, not what they look like, not whether they're good or bad or they're nice or they're mean or any of that. He wants you to look at who they are. Do they know Jesus? And if they do, how can you help them get to know Jesus more? And he wants to use you, pull you closer to him, and then have you 
pull other people toward him. So my challenge to you this week is look at who people really are, not what they do or how they act. If they don't know Jesus, try to find a way to tell them about Jesus so they can be drawn to God. Try to find a way to make them feel comfortable with Jesus and want to learn more about him. And if people do know Jesus, talk to them and try to help them get to know him even more. Okay? It's not always easy, I know that, but I think you can do that. Have a good week. Well, here we are back at the end. Well, I tell you, these programs assume the fire. I know, right? they just go quickly. But we're glad you joined us once again, whatever yes. time of day you're joining us, whatever day you're joining us. Yes. And we hope you learned a lot from the lesson today and the other things that we had during our program. And uh, So anyway, we, we hope that this week you'll look at people a little differently as you go through the day. Yeah, try to see them as God would look at them. Right. Rather than what you might think about them. So I always remember when I was a kid, they taught me that Jesus hates the sin but loves the sinner. That's right. And we need to do the same thing. We That's might right. not agree with what people do, but we still need to love them in Jesus. That's right. So anyway, we hope you have a great week. Stay safe, stay well. Bye-bye. See you next week.